If you want to learn about cutting edge AI algorithms with in-depth explanation, then you are in the right place. My name is Rituraj and today we are going to discuss a temporal difference learning algorithm called SARSA and we'll apply this algorithm on a simulated robotic arm so that it can learn by itself to reach a goal location. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, then do it right now to get videos on the topics like reinforcement learning, deep learning, evolutionary computation and so on. Before going to talk about SARSA algorithm, we need to talk about something called temporal difference learning. In particular, we are going to discuss something called TD0. There is another variant called TD lambda, but uh, in this video, we only discuss about TD0. That is temporal difference zero. Uh, unlike Monte Carlo approach that we uh, discussed in our previous video, in temporal difference learning, we don't have to wait till the end of the episode. We don't have to wait till the end of the episode to update the value of the uh, previously encountered state. In temporal difference learning, what we can do, uh, we can simply apply an action and we can move to the next state and then we can update the value of the previous state by observing the reward uh, as well as our previous guess of the next state. Before going uh, to the temporal difference learning algorithm, let's uh, quickly recap what was value function and what was Q value function and what is optimal value and what is uh, optimal Q value very quickly. Value of a state is the expected return that we obtain, expected return that we obtain uh, if we apply policy pi from a state and draw some trajectories. So uh, let's say we are in a state S and we apply policy pi repeatedly from that state onwards. And uh, let's say we get uh, these returns. And if we take the average, if we take the average of this return, then that's called the value of the state with respect to the policy pi. But uh, this average uh, is not actually average it's just uh, expectation if we can calculate but we, we can estimate the value by taking simply the average so similarly uh, what is the q value q value is something uh, associated with the state as well as a particular action so let's say we are in state s we apply action a we apply action a and then onwards we apply policy pi for uh, several episodes and we collect the returns and we take the average and we get the Q value of the state and the action pair so it is about state action pair Q value is about state action pair okay so again this average is the expectation uh, we can simply uh, estimate the expectation uh, simply by doing uh, this kind of averaging uh, the, now the question is why uh, if you are applying action A and why we are getting different trajectories or if we apply policy pi why we are getting different trajectories is because our, uh, our, our environment can be stochastic in that case if we apply the same action we end up in different state or if uh, our policy is stochastic then even if we apply the same policy we get different action sequences and that's why we get different trajectories and uh, we end up getting different returns of those trajectories so this is uh, this is the uh, value of the state and q value of the state action pair so what is the optimal value of the state it's the best is the best value of the state best value that is possible like best return expected return that maximum expected return that we can get uh, from that state onwards and it's associated with the optimal policy optimal policy means the best policy the policy that can give you the best return from that state onwards okay similarly what is the uh, optimal q value so optimal q value is the same uh, uh, is the same thing like uh, if you know the optimal policy uh, optimal q value is the best q value that you can get the maximum q value that you can get from that state and action pair onwards so as i said before that if you do not know the dynamics of the environment then it's better to estimate these q values like we try to uh, figure out this optimal Q value and not the value of the uh, value function simply value function we need to know about the optimal Q value so so we try to estimate this optimal Q value 
okay and once we have this optimal q value once we have the estimate of optimal q value for each and every state action pairs then we can simply extract the policy by taking argmax taking just just following the action that maximizes the uh, q value okay so that's the recap about uh, q value and optimal q value so let's go to the temporal difference learning and in particular td0 so in td0 update rule as i have already said that uh, we just take one as action and move to the next state and then we update the value uh, we update the value of the previous state so how we do that uh, here is the expression to do uh, the update and this is called td update rule so in td update rule if you see this is the new updated value of this state this is the old value and this is the learning rule and what we do we do this this is the old value of the state this state old value of this state and this is the value of the new state so this is the previously guessed value so previously said value of the state so maybe we have learned it or maybe we haven't learned it we just guessed it uh, like we randomly set it uh, at the beginning of the uh, learning process so whatever it is so it is the currently estimated value of this next state and this is the discount factor if you know you we use it to compute the discounted return uh, for an episode and here is the reward we obtain after applying the action a from state s and here is the learning rule so basically we are moving our uh, previous value of the state towards this expression slowly right so like this decides how fast we move towards this value so we try to move this value towards this value but slowly so let's go to the sarsa algorithm now so sarsa is an on policy temporal difference learning algorithm and as i said before it's 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 temporal difference learning algorithm but since we uh, already said that we need to uh, learn the optimal q value and not just the value of the function uh, value of the state so we'll talk about q value here if you see the expression it is exactly like the expression that we saw in the previous slide and uh, the only difference is that uh, here we are using q right q value of the state so uh, what we do here uh, we start with um, this uh, initial state we apply one action according to epsilon greedy policy and then we are in the next state and we observe the reward and accordingly we fit these values in this expression and we can update the q value of the previous state okay so what is the epsilon greedy policy is the policy that says you apply the action that maximizes the q value with probability probability 1 minus epsilon where epsilon is a small number let's say 0.1 maybe or maybe 0.2 very small number uh, otherwise you apply a random action at state a uh, at state s with probability epsilon epsilon is the that small number 0.2 let's say so we are not always applying the action that maximizes the uh, q value but we are um, we have some kind of probabilistic uh, approach we sometimes uh, randomly select uh, select action or and most of the time we apply the action that maximizes the uh, q value of the state so now let's check the sarsa algorithm so in the beginning of the algorithm we set some random values to all the state action pairs in the q table let's say we put zero values to all the state action pairs initially and then uh, we start the uh, learning iteration in every state s that we encounter we first execute the action a and action a comes from epsilon greedy policy okay we execute action a and we get the reward and now we are in state s dash okay and then what do we have to do we have to get the next action a dash uh, using epsilon greedy policy at state s dash 
now uh, what do we have to do we have to get the value of this quantity uh, from the table okay from the Q table now we can do the SARSA update uh, this is the new state action pair that we want to update this is the old state action pair and this is the TD error so we fit these values here we put this value here and we take this value from the table we take this value from the table and we update this value in the table okay and then once this is updated we set a equal to a dash and s equal to s dash that means we now consider the next state as a new initial state and um, we repeat the steps again from here for k steps k steps means it's the number of steps that we want to execute in one episode we can also terminate the episode if we encounter the terminal state but for simplicity we can say let's execute k steps for its episode and then once one episode is finished finished uh, we go back to the next iteration of the learning okay let's try this algorithm on a simulated robotic arm so this is a planar robotic arm with two degrees of freedom and for each degree of freedom you can define these uh, angles okay so these two angles are the state of the robot since this is a kinematic arm so we are not co considering any inertia and also our state can be fully defined using these theta angles of the joints okay so our state is two dimensional state and we apply actions plus 5 or minus 5 uh, at each joint so this joint can have uh, plus 5 degree action or minus 5 degree action and this joint can also have plus 5 degree action i mean displacement or minus 5 degree displacement at each time step okay let's run the algorithm on the simulated arm and let's see how, how it learns and while it is learning let's check the code this section corresponds to the initialization of the q table okay here we are initializing the q table with minus 5 values and this environment is uh, the arm that you see right now and i have written it in uh, pi game which is on top of this code actually but we cannot see it right now but i can share it after i release the video in youtube and here i'm assuming that in 2000 episodes we'll be able to learn something using sarsa algorithm okay so we start with epsilon greedy action as you can see uh, i'm not writing these uh, uh, epsilon greedy policies separately in a separate function as you can see it's a quick and dirty code i wrote it in 20 minutes so yeah so i put everything in one function so that we can easily change everything in the code and we tweak few things in the code and we can quickly maybe change this code to a q learning algorithm and then we here we execute the action okay so here i'm executing the same action for 30 steps because my frame rate is 30 frames per second and i want to apply the action for one second that's why i applied the the action for 30 steps and after 30 steps i uh, get the reward whatever reward uh, i get at the end and then i compute the epsilon greedy action in the next step okay and then i do the sarsa update as you can see here this is the sarsa update okay and then we set some values to the uh, from the next state to the initial state and then we go back to the next episode and as you can see in around uh, 700 around 700 or 750 episodes it has learned something and it is uh, the arm is repeatedly going back to the uh, goal position and the reward is kind of stabilized now uh, but it has some variations because of the epsilon greedy policy uh, because i set uh, something like uh, 0.2 epsilon here Mm, as you can see 0.2 epsilon here also in the epsilon greedy policy so uh, it will give some kind of variation sometimes but uh, on average it is going back to the it is going to the goal position again and again and um, yeah in around 700 episode we can see it is um, pretty much pretty much consistent uh, in the reward 
as you can see it has taken like 700 episodes and it is too much so if we apply sarsa algorithm on a real robotic system in real world scenarios then it will take forever to learn something new in the arm you can see it has only two degrees of freedom and with that two degrees of freedom it has taken like 750 episode if we use like five degrees of freedom arm then it will take even more episodes right so in in real in real world if we apply this algorithm on real robot which might have like uh, tens of uh, like tens of degrees of freedom maybe like 20 degrees of freedom 36 degree 40 50 degrees of freedom and uh, in that case it will take forever to learn something uh, something useful and uh, and that that's why we cannot apply like sarsa algorithm directly on real robotic system and in our next videos we'll see a reinforcement learning algorithms that are very very data efficient that means they can learn the something useful uh, in very uh, small number of episodes with small number of interaction and uh, with that i end this sarsa algorithm here and if you like this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, share the videos with your friends and like the video and uh, don't forget to click the bell icon uh, so that you get notified whenever I upload new videos. Bye-bye.